Hello, this is Sandout here, and we're going to be doing a different kind of video today. Today we're doing an unboxing of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Legendary Collection Game Board Edition. This is a re-release of the Legendary Collection 1, which included the three Egyptian God cards and several other fun things. The original release is in a binder form, very much like how I have the Legendary Collection 2 here, where it was a binder with three uh, monsters that were yellow, red, and blue. Um... I mostly bought Legendary Collection 2 for the Three Sacred Beasts. I am not an avid Yu-Gi-Oh! player um, anymore. I used to be many years ago. But I have been watching the show lately on new video groups, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! DVD sets that have come out recently, which are fantastic releases of the show, I might add. And when I saw this at Walmart, I was like, I gotta get the Egyptian God cards. I've owned one in the past, and that was Obelisk the Tormentor through a Shonen Jump promotion. But other than that, I've never owned Slifer the Sky Dragon or the Winged Dragon of Ra until now. So, I am very happy, and so I wanted to share my excitement in an unboxing video. I've never done something like this before, but I decided, hey, let's change things up. I do toy reviews mostly on this channel, but if you're a first-time viewer, I mostly review Power Rangers, Transformers, uh, I review... DC Comics action figures, and various other things like Super Sentai and Kamen Rider. Um, so, here we are. Now, the reason I'm doing this unboxing here instead of as opposed to my normal review set is because my review set, I, I feel, is for a more professional video style. This is a little bit more fun. I'm just kind of doing this off the cuff. I'm going to open up the cards inside, and I just kind of want to share my experience. As you can see in the background is my computer with my Yu-Gi-Oh! wallpaper that I just put on there because I thought that'd be a nice backdrop. I'm very much a fan of the original series of Yu-Gi-Oh! and not much else. Um, but here we are. So, this set cost me $29.98 at Walmart and is pretty cool. Now, I missed out on getting the uh, binder version of Legendary Collection number one, so I am excited to have this. Um, Taking a look at the box here, the box is really nice. It's a thick cardboard. It's reflective. Those aren't the actual Egyptian God cards. They're just pasted on images, but they are reflective like the real cards are, and that's really cool. We have this nice rainbow effect throughout, um, especially with the Egyptian hieroglyphics. I really like it. Um, there's a reason why it's called the Game Board Edition. The back of the box here, you can see, just kind of explains what comes in it. So let's take a look. So sliding the lid off. You can see cardboard inside. And we have a total of seven packs of cards in here. First off, we have our specialty pack that includes uh, several cards. And we also have six packs of cards that are the original expansion packs, which would be The Legend of the Blue Eyes White Dragon, Metal Raiders, Spell Ruler, Pharaoh Servant. Dark Crisis and Invasion of Chaos. These aren't first edition packs. They are a secondary. These are another run of the, the cards for these specific sets. Um, we'll take a look at that in a second. But what's really cool and why this is called the Game Board Edition is that underneath here, there's a game board. Now taking a look at that, and putting the rest of the box aside, you can see this game board has Slifer the Sky Dragon, on this side here, you get the Winged Dragon of Ra on the other side, and you can open it up to see Obelisk the Tormentor, the Dark Magician, Blue Eyes White Dragon, the Red Eyes Black Dragon, the Black Skull Dragon, Exodia Necros, and Magician of Black Chaos. So you get this really cool game board. It's a pretty thick, sturdy cardboard. But what's cool is on the other side, you get this picture of Yugi, Joey, and Kaiba. What's interesting is that they are actually the manga art with some slight modifications because these cards look like the real cards, but you can tell Kaiba's aren't the uh, are the manga style cards. I find this interesting because usually I like to use the show to promote things, but it definitely is the manga art as opposed to the show art. But what's really cool is you can take a look close. Extra deck zone, field card zone, monster card zone, spell trap card zone, deck zone, graveyard. This is a dueling mat, a very nice hard co or a hard, hard cardboard, nice image painted dual dueling mat. 
And that's why it's called the Game Board Edition, because it actually is a game board, and it's a dueling mat. So, that is really cool. Um, they, you know where things go. It's just, they're very well outlined. So, you, you can see all the outlines of where the cards go. But, it is very cool. I like it a lot. Um, it's a nice bonus. I mostly, again, mostly bought this just to have the God cards. So, that aside, let's take a look at the actual cards. Um, now, I've not opened Yu-Gi-Oh cards in years. Last thing I bought was Legendary Collection 2, which, oh, that was a while ago. Um, so that's cool. And plus, these are the six expansions I'm most familiar with. As I stopped really playing the game after Invasion of Chaos, um, I think the last expansion before that, I was trying to get Sacred Beasts out of packs, but I didn't really, wasn't really successful, and I've picked up a couple tens in the years since. And you can see all my Pokemon Super Mario and DC figures. I have a lot of them. Anyways, moving along, we're going to take a look at the specialty cards first. These are the ones that you're guaranteed to get in every set, as my screen went blank. Sorry about that. Uh, we're going to take a look here. Inside this pack, we have Obelisk the Tormentor, who looks like a better card than the Obelisk I got from the Shonen Jump issue. But you can see it is a rainbow holographic um, which is really, really cool. Here we go. Oh, I finally own Slifer the Sky Dragon. He's in that same holographic. Now, these aren't the legal, uh, tournament legal versions of the Egyptian God cards that are in the War of Gods packs. Uh, so they still say this card cannot be used in a duel. But I don't care. The, I'm mostly getting these for the collectability. And the Winged Dragon of Ra, who is also holographic shiny. Now, the rest of these are pretty cool. But I have them already, or at least the artwork. These Blue Eyes White Dragon, um, I believe this was part of the, I think it was the Starter Deck Kaiba um, EX or something like that. Then we also have the Dark Magician, which is from the Starter Deck Yugi EX um, pack, so that's cool. It's nice having extras of these. And then you have the Red Eyes Black Dragon, which is originally a Shonen Jump pack in. I know because I got that issue. But these are all holographic shinies, so I think they actually are... I'm calling them shinies, sorry. I don't know, the, they're, they're rainbow holographic. Um, so these, I, I think these are like a little bit different from the ones I have. But these are cool, as these are probably the three most iconic uh, monsters in, in the game. And it matches the three duelists that are on the game mat, so that's really cool. So, putting those aside, let's take a look at the random packs. Like I said, not first editions, but I'll be glad to get any cards that I've seen in the show, because, eh, prop replica. It's kind of what I go for. Um, again, I got this set mostly of nostalgia, but I like these cards, so let's take a look. Oh, I have a ton of these. Hard Armor. <laughs> Hard Armor is one of those cards where you just end up with a lot of them, but he's not really that useful. He's a great card to match with Shield and Sword because he has a higher defense than he does an attack, but other than that, he's kind of useless. Alright, we got Armail. Um, another card I've gotten a lot of. Again, good for Shield and Sword. Wasteland! I like Wasteland. Um, it helps with Dinosaur, Zombie, and Rock types, so that's pretty cool. Steel Ogre Grotto number one. Also a card I've gotten several times. Fusionist. I have never owned this card. It's a fusion of Petite Angel and Mystical Sheep number two. Somehow it makes a cat with wings. Whatever. It's a cool card. Oh! Look at that. A rainbow holographic monster reborn card. That is so cool. I've gotten so many monster reborns over the years. But I have not ever seen one that's this, this holographic. Oh, that's so cool. Terra the Terrible, another great card that I remember from the old days. Typhoon, or Typhoon, whatever he is. And the ever-classic Skull Servant, one of the weakest cards ever. So overall, a uh, very good pack, um, nothing too famous like the Dark Nation, Blue Eyes, Exodia pieces. That's another thing I need to collect one day. I have one Exodia piece. I need to get the other four. But that that made my day. I've I've never seen a Monster Reborn look that good. That makes me happy. 
So, moving on. Next we have Metal Raiders, which is the second booster pack. Um, so let's take a look here. Just Wow, these packs tear really easily. Um, I forgot how easy that is. I've been opening Power Rangers cards a lot lately. Oh, Doma the Angel of Silence. That was the card, one of the cards that uh, Dark Bakura pulled um, in his tarot card situation with uh, Pegasus at the end of Season 1. Cybersaurus! Oh, I love Cybersaurus. Blast Juggler and Two-Headed King Rex equals One-Headed um, T-Rex with an Arm Cannon. Crawling Dragon, a very awesome card that um, I remember being used by Bones in the show. Larvae Moth, one of Weevil Underwood's uh, type cards. Good with Petite Moth and Cocoon Evolution. Ooh, Starboy. I've never seen this card before. It's an evil starfish. It makes me think of Starro. Mystic Horseman. Oh, oh, cool. Um, Mystic Horseman is always one of those that I'm like, yeah, that's awesome because it was one of Kaiba's cards. I don't think we ever actually saw it in the anime. I think it was just used to fuse with Battle Ox most of the time. Ooh, the Crass Clown. Another one of Bones' cards that became a zombie. Water Omotics. I remember that. Was that in the show at some point? I think it was. Oh, the armored zombie. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. I know they're in different forms, but in one pack, I got the three cards that Bones used against Joey um, in the graveyard duel. Oh, that is so cool. I'm really happy with that. Um, at the very least, I got all three of those guys. That's that's a pretty that's a successful pack. Spell Ruler, first pack to include a Relinquished, I believe, um, which was a big deal back in the day. I remember Relinquished being a big deal. And then when he was included in the Pegasus starter deck, everyone was really happy because it was easy to get Relinquished. All right. High Tide Gyojin. No, I remember having this card. <laughs> Peacock. No, no, no special name, no, like, feathered peacock or whatever. Just peacock. That's fantastic. Toll. What does this do? As long as this card remains face on the field, both you and your opponent must pay 500 life points per monster to attack. Ooh, I like that card. I might use that in one of the Yu-Gi-Oh! video games that I have. Octo Berzer. Uh, another aqua monster. Ooh, Mystic Tomato. Eh. Reminds me of Attack of the Killer Tomatoes a lot. Um, when this card's sent to the graveyard as a result of battling, especially on one dark monster. Ooh, that's handy. Hungry Burger! Oh, this is one of my favorite ritual cards ever. Because it's just a burger that wants to eat you. Because you're trying to eat a burger. That's, oh, that's fantastic. Labyrinth Wall! Ah, oh, the famous card of, of, Par of the Paradox Brothers. Double Double Duel, duel was so cool. Curse of Fiend. Change the battle position of all attack monsters on the field to defense position and vice versa. Hmm. Interesting. And Guardian of the Throne Room. Don't know why he guards a throne room. He looks like a robot. But then again, this card, this, this card game is not one that makes perfect sense all the time. Alright, next up, Pharaoh's Servant. In fact, I found an unopened Pharaoh's Servant pack in my house recently that I thought was pretty cool. Ooh, Thousand Eye Idol! Uh, one of Pegasus's cards. And I'll go down on record saying that Maximilian Pegasus was probably the best villain Yu-Gi-Oh! ever had. Thousand Eye's Idol, along with Relinquish, made Thousand's Eyes Restrict, which was cool. Dark Fire Soldier number two. Pretty cool. Solemn Wishes. You gain 500 life points when you draw a card or cards, and it's a continuous. Ooh, that's handy. Enchanted Javelin. Noble Man of Extermination. Another one of my favorite cards. Also, I might add that these do say Spell Card on them instead of Magic Card, which makes them different from the first editions. Noble Man of Extermination is always handy because it just doesn't matter if it's a spell or trap card that you're trying to destroy. It will destroy it. Or... It will remove it from play. The only downside is if you uh, get rid of your opponent's magic jammer, it you lose your magic jammer too. 
Invitation to a Dark Sleep. That's a monster card. That's cool. Steel Ogre Grotto number two. Interesting. Because I got Steel Ogre Grotto number one in that first pack. Harpy's Brother. The card I always wanted Mai to use in the show, but she never did. Um, as far as I know, except maybe later seasons, I never saw seasons four or five of the show. But I will, once the DVDs come out. And attack and receive one of my favorite trap cards, second only to Wabaku. Just because there's such a... The Wabaku is great because you flip that card on your opponent, and then they're like, oh, well, damage is zero. Wonderful. I play a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! video games how I play the game recently. But attack and receive is always fun because when you get attacked, your opponent takes damage to their life points. Again, I like the cards that just troll your opponent, uh, especially those trap cards that you just flip and... oh. Guess what? You thought you were going to take damage to my life points. Well, you did, but you get damage too. Anyways, Dark Crisis is next. I was about to open it off camera, which would have been bad, because I got a good record going. And again, these packs do not open <laughs> very well. Um, I guess the packaging isn't important to most people. Contract with Exodia! Holy crap! What does this do? You can only activate this card when you have Exodia the Forbidden One, right arm of the Forbidden One, left right leg, and left leg in your graveyard. Special summon one Exodia Necros from your hand. Oh, that's cool. That's the Exodia Necros card. Final attack orders. As long as this card remains in the field, all face-up monsters on the field are changed to attack position. Their battle positions cannot be changed. Hmm. Thousand Needles. That's cool. Spell reproduction. Send two spell cards from your hand to the graveyard. Select one spell card from your graveyard and add to your hand. That can be handy. Ooh, Guardian Bow. I don't think I've ever... I, I, I know I got a lot of uh, Dark Crisis packs, but I never have seen this card before. Shows me how much I know about these things. That one looks cool. DD Trainer. Interesting. Guardian KS. I have a Japanese version of this card. Um, there was some kind of mix-up. And the the uh, Air Force Base Exchange nearby got, like, a case of Japanese Yu-Gi-Oh cards as opposed to English ones. And I bought a few packs, and that was one of them. Ooh, Ojama Trio. Oh, the Ojamas. I, I eventually got all the Ojama cards for whatever reason. That's cool. And Checkmate. Tribute one Archfiend monster on your side of the field during this turn. One Terror King Archfiend on your side of the field card. Can attack your opponent's life directly. It's one of those spell cards where if you get it in a pack and you don't have the cards it only works with, then they're kind of pointless. Alright. And lastly, we have Invasion of Chaos. Let's open this up. As I break the packaging, computer screen keeps turning off. And let's pull out this here. Sylphid. That sounds really dirty. <laughs> Recycle. During your standby phase, by paying 100 li 300 life points, select one non-monster card in your graveyard and return it to the bottom of your deck. Oh, that can be handy. Skull Mark Ladybug. Mm, well, that does look like a ladybug. Really killer ladybug. Energy Dread, always a good one. Chain Disappearance. I know I've heard of Chain Destruction, but changes appearance? You can only activate this card when a monster's with an attack of a thousand or less is normal summon, flip summon, or special summoned. Remove from play these, spe these summoned monsters, and your opponent removes from play all cards of the same name in their hand or and deck. Their deck is then shuffled. I like how Man Eater bugs the card they show. Oh my god. Look at that. Manticore of Darkness. That is one ho rainbow holographic. I'm going to call it that. I don't know the official term. That is freaking cool. Like, look at that card. That is not bad for a pack from so long ago. Pinch Hopper, something we wonder would use. Blazing in Pachi. And Boganine. So, to recap, we had a lot of good cards in a in six packs I think I got a lot of cards that I have 
wanted, I have used in video games, but never owned in real life, and some that I never even heard of that I think were really cool, and I'm restacking everything um, because I didn't think about this. So, definitely the winners of this set are the Monster Reborn and the Manticore of Darkness. They look really, really cool. But overall, the main reason I bought the set was for the three Egyptian God cards, and I own them now, which makes me really happy, because it's a life goal complete. But yeah, hope you all enjoyed this out there. I may do some more unboxings if I buy more cards of anything, maybe when I find Series 4 of the Power Injection card game. But for now, that is all. If another Yu-Gi-Oh! set pops up that catches my eye as having cards that I've always wanted, why isn't there a Legendary Collection set that has the five Exodia pieces? I mean, come on. I mean, as far as I know, the Exodia pieces haven't been offered in a long time. It would be cool if they offered them again in a set like the God cards are. But that's just an idea. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I know it ran a little bit long, but hey, there's my first unboxing video. So let me know if you want to see any more of these in the future. And until next time, sound saying, be sure to check out HeroTaku.com for all your Yu-Gi-Oh! news and more, and goodbye.